A lot of stuff going on here. Shannon, what's your take? Who wins and what's the score? Skip, I've been I've been really, really disappointed in the Patriots. And you know I spoke glowing. I say, Skip, I believe they can get to 10 wins. I still and, I, and they still possibly could. I say, but I believe this is a playoff team. You look at what the upgrades that they've given on both sides of the football. They've upgraded the offensive line, brought Trent Brown back, go out and get Nelson Agu Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry, uh, John New Smith. They've done a lot to add to the offense and then the defense. I've just been disappointed with this team all around. The defense hasn't been as good, as near as nearly as good as I thought it would be, especially early on. And it's not like they've gone through murderer's row. No. Nope. And so for me, I've been very disappointed in this football team. Um, I, I thought Matt would be a little better, and I think they thought he would probably be a little better. That's why they were so willing to move on from Cam Newton yep. earlier uh, in the preseason. I don't care what anybody says. I still believe that Cam Newton would be at least two and one had he played these three ball games. But that's neither here nor there. Skip it. When I went to bed last night, I said, you know what? I think the Bucks, Bucks are going to blow them out, and I still do. But I'm going to give them seven more points. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I believe the final score will be 34-17. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's only the third time in the last 18 years in which the Patriots have been a seven-point or more mm -hmm. underdog. That just lets you know, Skip, how far they've fallen in a very short amount of time. Mm. Tom Brady, look, they, they, I, Skip, and I, and I heard Tom Brady's little press conference yesterday and how it was handled perfectly. I don't think anybody getting to a divorce with the anticipating of, of getting to a marriage with the anticipation of getting divorced. Mm. And it, it, it was handled, handled amicably. Mm. How you break up? We've been together all this time. We're talking about it's amicable. It's not. It's not. Tom Brady wants to hang half a hundred. Let me take that back. He want to get a hundred mm -hmm. because he, all the all the frustration he had. Yep. He has a very implosive person that's game. He bottled this thing up for twenty years. He did. He was seething all yep. along. It's a teapot. Give me that. You know, once he get a certain point. Psss, yep, I agree. And that's Tom Brady. And Sunday, I think the game was eight twenty. Probably by uh, by eight forty five, nine o'clock. Mm. Everything over. It'd be mm. time to get a bit of addiction. Mm. Now, the game is going to go a little longer than that. Mm -hmm. But it, for all intents and purposes, Skip, I believe it'll be over. Tom Brady and the Bucks are coming in. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I was reading somewhere it's going to be Bruce Arians' birthday also. So he gets a birthday party. Tom Brady gets his revenge party. Mm. Everybody goes home happy mm. except the Patriots and their fans. I got it 34-17. I think the Buccaneers do a mm. whitewashing. So by your definition, that's a blowout. Yes, correct? yes. That's what I believe it is. 34-17 yes. says the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. Yes. So, I present you once again the opportunity to buy your way out of the bet that you made with me. Would you like to buy out of, because we have effectively four cases, four cases. bet on this game. Yeah. I will let you out from under that foolish bet that you made for two cases right well, here, right now. Excuse me, it wasn't foolish at the beginning of the season because you okay. and I both thought the Patriots were going to be better than I, this. I thought they could win 10, and now what are they going to have to do? Go like 9 and 5 <laughs> to get to 10 yeah, wins, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Okay, I'll do it. You'll take it? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Shannon Sharp says, bet is off, but you do owe me two cases. I owe you two cases. Okay. Now, my turn. I am very happy you just bought your way out of this bet because I don't love what Tom Brady is about to be up against in Foxborough. He's going back, quote, unquote, home. And I believe he's going to have a long, hard night. I think this is going to be a much closer game than you think. I'm still going to pick the Buccaneers to win this game. But I think it's going to be a battle down to the wire. I got it 28 to 24 because I think that Tom Brady's emotions are going to be scattered all over the town of Foxborough going into this game. Mm -hmm. I think that he wants to win this game even worse than he's wanted to win his Super Bowls that he won or lost. I, I believe that, that this is a classic put him on the couch game because this is a father versus son game because his football father pushed him out the back door right. and, and rejected him mm -hmm. and said, you're finished. And the son went elsewhere. He went way south down to Tampa and said, Dad, watch what I'm going to do without you. Right. And he pulled it off in mm -hmm. a pandemic with no preseason on a torn MCL. He won the Super Bowl with a team that used to be called the Suckaneers, mm -hmm. seven and nine the season before. Dad, are you watching me? Well, now he's got to go back to what should be his house, where he wanted to finish his career badly because it was the fairy tale is to finish it in New England mm -hmm. with another Super Bowl or two. Correct? Correct. 
it's it's his heart, his soul is all in that stadium. As, as you kept talking about all week, he said, I know everything. I know what it's going to feel like. I know what the wind is going to feel like. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what he's going to be telling them in their locker room. Exactly. I know exactly what he's going to try this and he's going to try that. And Tom desperately wanted to be part of that, right. even though he hated it. Right. It's a love hate right. where you know that, that you won in spite of him. You overcame him. You know in your heart of hearts you were the reason that he became the genius GOAT coach. Well, right? Skip, the only reason we're talking about this game is happened to be Tom Brady is in Tampa and he's coming back to Foxborough okay. because Tom Brady has still been in there. We would not be talking about no Tampa and the New England okay. Patriots. So I thank you for taking me off the emotional hook because obviously I'm a much bigger Brady fan than you are. You've come around a bit uh -huh. of late. But I have been all about Brady from the start because I believe in him as the GOAT quarterback and the ultimate leader slash winner. Well, you believe he's the most responsible for what transpired in New England over those 20 years. Yeah, I've upped it to 75% <laughs> of the credit. You, you used to give Brady like 10%, but I think you're up to 50 now, Well, right? I get I, I was 60, 40. Now I might be going 55, 45 the other way. Okay, other way. I, I do appreciate that. <laughs> but the point is that I believe that Tom Brady wants this so badly that he will try too hard. And when I watched that interview yesterday, mm -hmm. it shook me up a little bit because that didn't feel Brady-esque to me. Usually, he's completely in charge of his interviews. Mm -hmm. Usually, he has a certain piece about him going into a Super Bowl right. game where th there's no way he looks rattled, or shaken, or over-emotional, right. or over-hyped. And I'm watching him yesterday, and he's even losing his voice. Now, he says this has happened to him a few times before, mm -hmm. but if we could just see a snippet of, of what he looked and sounded like yesterday. <sighs> Raspy. At first, I thought, oh, God, does he have a sore throat? But, but he says it's not really a sore throat. Said he's had this before other games. He, he may have been yelling so hard at practice. Yep. As you know, he goes after yep. his his offensive lineman and his yeah, this, receivers. This, this game might have a little bit more meaning than the other ones. Right. <laughs> to the point he's losing his voice. Mm -hmm. So to me, now we come down to the chess match. The, this, this will be the ultimate chess match. Yes. And the, the problem that Brady knows that he's facing is, as you keep pointing out, his defense ain't his defense right. of last year. Right. I don't think JPP is going to be able to play. He hasn't practiced. He's right. got a bum shoulder. I don't know the extent of it, but it sounds almost certainly he will not play. Right. I told you going into the Rams game, it's a huge loss. To me, he's the single most valuable player on the defense. Mm -hmm. And if you take him away from Shaq Barrett, you negate Shaq Barrett right. because they can chip him or double him and just Correct. take him out of the game. Right. Was he not quiet against the Rams? Very. We, we just didn't hear much about mm -hmm. him. And then all of a sudden, Jamel Dean, who's – Average at best. Mm -hmm. I'll give him. He, he was the starter, and they won the Super Bowl with mm -hmm. him. So I got to give him average. Mm -hmm. But he has not played well this year, and he hurt his knee and was gone for really for three quarters right. of the Rams game. Right. Well, he he tried to practice on a limited basis. Is he going to play limited? He's average limited. You're kidding me. <laughs> and, and that brings back into the equation the immortal D Delaney. I'm sorry to keep bringing his name up, but. Undrafted out of the Citadel, bounced around five different teams, mm -hmm. rose up from the practice squad, and there he was playing a prominent role in the Rams game right. against a very high-powered offense at so fine but, stadium. But here's the question, Skip. Although the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is not what we remember them in the Super Bowl in the five or six games leading up to the Super Bowl, yep. can the Patriots, does the Patriots offense have the potential or the firepower to take advantage of what we, what, of, of what we seem to think is a banged-up, mm -hmm not as good as we previously thought Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense. Do we believe that? Are the Patriots good enough to take advantage like everyone else seemed to have taken advantage? We saw what the uh, Cowboys did as far as the yards and the points yeah. they put up. We saw what the Rams and Matthew Stafford did. We saw what, for the most part, uh, uh, Matty Ice did until the last two plays of the game in which they went back for pick sixes. Okay. So, do the Pats have enough with Matt Jones and what they have around him to take advantage of what we think is a deficient buck defense? Okay. This is a classic game to me of keep away because I believe that Bill Belichick will say, I just have to keep the ball away from Brady. It's the classic Belichick as the defensive coordinator for Parcells going into the Buffalo Super Bowl when everybody thought, man, you're going to get blown out by right. the K-Gun offense mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. Jim Kelly and right. company. Right. And they just said that the Peter King has written about on the bus as they left the NFC Championship game. 
Bill just said to the other Bill, Parcells to Belichick, shorten the game. Right. Well, the way you shorten it is you run it and you keep it and you convert third down. Yeah, but, right? but see, what you fail to realize, Skip, that 90s defense and the Giants I know, I know. were really, I'm really serious. good. <laughs> okay, but the point is, it's your offense. Right. Can Mac Jones and company, can they pound it against a, a beat up, sort of reeling Tampa defense. Mm -hmm. It's just not what it was. Right. It seems like they've lost their confidence. Right, and right. They signed Richard Sherman, but unfortunately, he goes in there and starts coaching him up like he's the, the player coach, right. now the leader of the, right. the defense right. in his first workout. He can't play He's Sunday. not going to be ready he's to play. He's not going to be ready right. to play. So how does that help them? So all of a sudden, it's the game of Tom's life, and he doesn't have the backup. He doesn't have the bodyguard defense right. that that helped take him through the playoff. Run. But Skip, if you remember, it was the the Buffalo Bills that got off to the great start, and they had and and the Giants had to come from behind because they got a sack. Yep. You know, remember Bruce Smith sack uh, the quarterback he sack did. the uh, I forget who you no, uh, Jim Kelly. No, it was a. Uh, Hosteller. Yeah, Hosteller That's played for the Giants. He sacked yeah, Hosteller in Tampa. Yeah. It, 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 so Buffalo got up to the great start. Yep. And it was that, you know, third and whatever, they ended up getting a first down. But even still, Skip, it still took what? It still took a missed field goal from Norwood in order for them to win the ball game. It did, but they pulled it out. They did. And, and it was seen as a shocking oh, upset it was. and a genius coaching right. job by the two Bills right. on the other side. Right. Okay? So now you have a Bruce Arians who suddenly conflicted as in, gee, we we got to we we got to protect our defense right. because w w we need to keep the ball as much as we can keep the ball. Will they shut it down more and run the ball a little bit more and try to, to well, hold they on to been, it? Skip, they running game hadn't been what we thought. We thought it, it would get better. We thought we, the with, with Rojo and Leonard Fournette, we thought okay, they're gonna run the ball because they ran the ball a little bit last year, especially come playoff time. Okay. Their run game, Skip, it's th their run game has been Tom Brady with short passes, with bubble screen, jailbreak screens, and things of that nature. So that seems to be their short ball game. Okay. The question is, who can Damian Harris have the impact? Of an OJ of Otis Anderson, mm -hmm. where he shortened the game and he was running, getting first down, and keeping that offense off the field. Can they do that? Because I, like I said, Skip, I've not been impressed. I thought I was going to see a lot more firepower from the Pats' offense than what I've seen. I thought I was going to see a defense yep. that was going to be suffocating, considering some of the pieces with Matthew uh, Matthew Judon back yep. and Kyle Van Oy yep. and J. C. Jackson, who was playing unbelievable. I thought I was going to see a better defense. I've been disappointed in what I saw, Skip. Okay, so on offense, I've told you the secret weapon that they have that they probably will not use is Ramondre Stevenson from the University of Oklahoma. They stole in the fourth right. round this year, but he fumbled in game one and went oh, straight oh, to yeah, the dugout. Oh, yeah, yeah, the dog You're done. Yeah, You're he done. the dog house. But, but he is a difference maker mm -hmm. of a 250-pound bulldozing right. running back who can also run. Right. So I, I don't think they're going to have to worry about that. So now it comes down to how will Tom play to start the game? I hope I'm wrong about this. I bet you, and you've seen this happen before, he'll be a little bit off. He'll be a little overamped. Yeah. There'll be a little too much of what I call psycho Tom. He'll want it too badly. Mm -hmm. He'll press a little bit. He'll overthrow a couple of throws. They'll get off to a shaky start, and New England will hang in the game because he's not quite right. Well, Skip, the, the first the first couple of drive, the first couple of, the first series, Coach Belichick will show him something that Tom isn't expecting, and we've seen this even in the Dallas game. Skip, we saw we got up, they got up to the slow start. We saw against the Rams, they got up to the slow start, and then the next drive they come out there, they go right down the field, boom, boom, boom. So we'll, it's going to be very interesting to see. I'm sure Coach Belichick is going to give him a look or a couple of looks that they're not expecting. But I don't expect this to last any time. Okay. Tom will be ready for this moment. Y yes, he's going to be amped. Yes, he understands. But Skip, he wants this more than anything. Okay. What was the classic Belichick game plan that he got the most credit for in a huge game against Peyton Manning? Mm -hmm. It was back on November 24th of 2013, also on a Sunday night. Right. Peyton goes in there on fire and was on fire in the first half of the game because right. they led 24 to nothing, mm -hmm. did your Broncos, Broncos mm -hmm. 24 to nothing right. at halftime. Second half, they dared Peyton to run the ball. They, right. they, they just basically, because remember, Belichick's classic cover one. That's just, he, you can just count 
count on he's going to come out first with one single high safety. That's just that's that, his calling card. Right. That's what they that's do. That's what he does now. But that night, as Aqib Talib said after the game, we too, went too, too deep, deep shell. You know, we just we just we we lighten the box so much that Peyton's looking at it saying, well, I. I got to give it to No Sean, right. No Sean Moreno, mm -hmm. and guess what? No Sean went for two two yeah. seven. He yeah. went for two hundred twenty seven yards, mm -hmm. and here came Brady back in the game because Peyton didn't throw it that much. Right. He went nineteen of only thirty six for a grand total of one hundred and fifty eight yards. Right. So, so it wasn't on fire, Peyton. Right. That that usually just throws them off. And, the and field. that's the thing, Skip. That, that's what you dare these great quarterbacks to do. You dare because remember Mahomes, they lost, Skip. But look how many rush yards they have. You can't. You're a great quarterback. You can't beat me. Coach Belichick says, if you got Peyton Manning, I don't believe you can beat me running the football. Okay. If you got Tom Brady, I don't believe you can beat me running the football. Okay. But I know what he can do. Okay, so I know that, he can throw for three, four hundred dollars, three or four hundred yards, and beat me. That famous or infamous Sunday night. Here came Brady in the second half. He winds up throwing for a grand total of three forty-four, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and they roar back to win in overtime. 34 to 31. Mm -hmm. Well, don't think that Belichick hasn't thought about, I'm, I'm going to just make him run the football. Right. Because to your point, they haven't run it very well. They right. ran it pretty well in the playoffs right. last year. Right, right. But, but if, if you force the run, maybe you keep it a little closer. Right. You keep Tom from getting into a rhythm right. and figuring you out mm -hmm. where, where he starts to find. Because the, the arsenal of receivers, remember, A.B. did not play against the Rams. COVID Correct. protocol, mm -hmm. he will be back. And I right. think he's the X factor right. as far as their bombs mm -hmm. away offense. Because right. I think... He's got a little axe to grind with Mr. Kraft. Right. So I think it'll be Brady to A.B. more than Brady to Gronk. Well, I, be I believe you're right, Skip. I believe that's the way they're going to play him. They're going to play shell coverage with the safeties back because Coach Belichick at his, at his purest is a cover two guy. They play a 3-4 defense. They normally get, have big guys up front to shut your run down and force you to, to throw the ball into cover two. But And so could he possibly think that, you know what? I'm going to play this shell coverage. You guys can't run the ball against our front seven. I'm going to dare you. I dare you. Yes, I'm, I'm going to let it be known. Our safeties are back. Mm -hmm. Have okay. at it. Have at it. And, Tom, let's see how many times you want to hand it off mm -hmm. because he wants to throw, yeah. He wants to score 100 points. Yeah. I agree with yes. you. But you know what happens when you come out in a football game wanting to score 100? <laughs> you score 20. You, you, you score 20 because it, it doesn't – it's not that easy. Right. And, again, they do not have Stephon Gilmore. Right. And, and I give you that. No JP on one side, no Stephon on the other side. Right. But, but, listen, J.C. Jackson is really good. He really And good. he can he take played. somebody by himself. Right. And I think that somebody's going to have to be – Mike Evans. Or, or either way. Or, or, or Mike Evans or, or A.B.? It, one of the, you got to pick your poison. Or Godwin. Or Godwin. See, the, the problem is there's so many. To, to me, I told you the other day, I, I will bet you, because Gronk is the ultimate security blanket and right. it has been through the first three right. games for Brady. And he's been so, limited to participate in practice he, with those ribs. He got beat up. But still, you double Gronk and just say you cannot have him right. today. He will not be a factor mm -hmm. in this game. I think you have enough manpower back there to double Mike Evans. And then Godwin could get singled on J.C. And then I don't know what you do with A.B., but right. you, you just close your eyes and hope he doesn't get loose. Well, what Coach Belichick normally does, Skip, when you have a, a receiving threat tight end, he normally likes to bang the tight end. So I look for Kyle Van Noy to try to be as physically as he physical as he possibly can dealing with Gronk off the line of scrimmage. We're not going to give you free releases, Gronk. We know you want to get down the field in a hurry, get yep. to that route as fast as you possibly can, but we're going to slow that thing up. Mm -hmm. So we want, we want Brady to see that we're banging on you. So immediately, I don't have Gronk. Let me go someplace else. Yep. Because if he thinks he has Gronk, if he sees Gronk oh. gets a free release, oh. oh, he's going to Gronk. You don't think they'd like to throw a little party oh, back yeah. in Foxborough? Those no, two? Ab absolutely. So that's why Belichick will say, not on my watch right. will I allow that to happen right. to me. Right. So think about what's happened over the last two weeks. Tom Brady co-signed on his father doing an interview last week mm -hmm. with Boston Media and co-signed on his father just spilling, just, just spilling his guts about mm -hmm. validation right. that we, we have achieved in Tampa, right? right. Then he also co-signed, not this week, but last week on his trainer, mm -hmm. Alex Guerrero, doing an interview with Boston Media right. and spilling about how Bill never evolved. Mm -hmm. He never treated Tom the way he should have treated him after Tom became a made man with, right. with at least two Super Bowls, yeah, correct, right? Correct. Okay, so Brady knew that was coming. Then here comes the book 
that, that hits the bombshell book. And all of a sudden, Seth Wickersham, it, it's, it's got anecdote after anecdote after anecdote, basically validating Brady. Mm -hmm. To me, I told you yesterday, Belchuk, Belchuk comes off awful in that book. Yeah. To me, you yeah. said, well, he already was awful. <laughs> he, we already knew he was a villain and a scoundrel, right? Exactly. Okay, but, but this just validated it for everybody. So Tom has him on the run. But but Tom is living and loving this right now <laughs> because everything he he ever dreamed of to get even with Co Coach Belichick right. is all out for public consumption. Correct. Well, now you have to put the exclamation point on it by going up there and winning 34 to 17. Yeah, Skip, but the thing is what Coach, look, Coach Belichick knows the thing that gives Tom Brady problem is what? Pressure right up the middle. The problem is they don't have guys that can do that. That's the thing that beats Brady. And all those games, you look at Tom, it's, it's basically been pressure. It's not something like this exotic scheme where they disguise this and he thought it was coming from there and it came from this. He doesn't see ghosts. He sees four guys that can collapse the pocket on him. Yeah. Two guys in the middle that can force him to your edges. Yeah. That's Jude, a simple thing. Jude on his serious business. Yeah. He, he, he was the best signing that they made yes, to me. Yes, yes, He changed it. Right. The way he has, well, I think he has three and a half sacks. Yeah. But they haven't got the production out of every, uh, out of the other guys. Skip, Coach Belichick has really never been a, a sack team. Yeah. He's a two-gap because yeah. he don't want guys to jump through and get out and take off running. Well, he don't have to worry about that. You don't yeah. have to worry about Tom Brady going anywhere. So in the end, I, I really don't think there's any pressure on Mac Jones at all because nobody expects right. Mac Jones to outplay Tom Brady. And I'm What is the pressure if they expected him to play better than what he's been playing these first three okay. games? That's the Okay, there's some there, but not that much. So here's my bottom line to this. My theory that I've told you before a number of times on the show is about when everybody says – well, this week, everybody <laughs> says that the Bucks will rout the Patriots at Foxborough, yeah. that Brady will get even with Belichick, yeah. right? Have you heard anybody? I, I don't know. You know, I read as much as I can. I have seen nobody no. in the media, no experts, mm -mm. nobody has picked the home team. No. They are seven-point underdogs, and usually when that happens, it's way closer than you think. And oftentimes when that happens, it's a big upset. Yeah, well, Skip, here's the thing. Everybody's giving you the ingredients for this dish, but nobody wants to eat this dish. Everybody said, well, this is what the Patriots need to do to upset the Bucks." Okay, are you picking the, are no, you picking the Patriots? Nobody no, is. you're not. <laughs> and I'm not either, but I, <laughs> I must either. tell you, I am greatly relieved that you bought your way out of that bet because I would be sweating it if you had no, not. No, I'm sweating it. Huh? All no, right, but, but I reserve the right at some point there, in time guys. during the show to we come have back. To leave it there. Did, Don't with worry. That yeah. No, we you do. Wait a second. This story, <laughs> he's, he's trying to weasel out. <laughs> I reserve the no. right. What? I reserve the right. You did. You said it. We have it on tape. You said I buy my way out. It's a two and a half hour show. I said it, that in the well, first thirty over. minutes. It is over. All right. We'll see whose prediction is right. Thirty-four seventeen Shannon or twenty-eight twenty-four Skip. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.